Hey, 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 it's your girl, Miss Trina, with Chat with Trina. And it is still Trina's Favorite People Month 2022, celebrating my birthday all August long. And today, my favorite person is none other than Houston's own saxophonist, Kyle Turner. Kyle, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited. And y'all, make sure that y'all watch all the way to the end so y'all can hear my birthday song. Hello, 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 everybody. This is Miss Trina with Chat with Trina. And it is, oh, first I want to say thank you for making the choice to click in. And it is Trina's Favorite People Month, celebrating my birthday all month long. And my special birthday guest today is Mr. Kyle Turner. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Before, let's start this off. Let's start this off right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, thank you again for joining me today. I really appreciate that. And I am so glad the live music is back, aren't you? Oh, most definitely. Most so definitely. Excited. It was a it's been a very challenging three, two and a half years. Did you have any epiphanies or aha moments during that time? You know what? Um really not. You know, um mm -hmm. it one thing that I did notice is that uh, families you know, became a little bit more connected because of the fact of the amount of time that you were spending mm -hmm. and that you were forced to spend, which is, is a shame that you have to be forced to spend time. Yeah. And But uh, families became closer. And um, and then once I came back and was able to start playing again in front of people, um, how much I appreciated that opportunity. You know, it was, I was very, you know, grateful that mm -hmm. I was able to share, you know, share my gift. Again. Mm -hmm. I think that was, I think when everybody got back on the stage, it was like, wow, we're back. It was like a big thing. I was like a reunion, I'm sure. Seeing all. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're right. It was like a big reunion, especially, you know, like some of the festivals, everybody, you know, and, yeah. and you still had to kind of be cautious because, you know, there was still, it was still out there. But, and, you know, and it was, um, you know, everybody, you know, we tried to take precautions, but you haven't seen had your hook. friends. <laughs> Yeah, dear friends, in two years, you know, you you def yeah. definitely, you you know, you embraced each other. You went to yeah. MB Smiley. Yeah, I sure did. Look at you. <laughs> Doing my research. <laughs> yeah, I see. So, what was that like growing up over in that area? It, you know, what I wouldn't have, I would not have traded for the world. I, I was very blessed. You know, uh, I've always been around music because my dad's a musician. Oh. But uh, but being in that North Forest Independent School District was vital. Um, uh, you know, went to Oak Village Middle School. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my band director, Algernon Jones, who is still actively playing, oh, um, wow. he he got me started. And in, in, uh, even when I teach, you know, when I was teaching, mm -hmm. I would find myself sounding like him a lot because that's how oh, much of an yes, that's how much of an impression he made on me. And um, then with uh, Smiley as well as Forrest Brook being in the North Forest Independent School District, both schools had uh, strong music programs, and um, and I wouldn't have traded mine the way it came, the way it happened for nothing in the world. I got so much musically out of uh, my band directors, uh, the late uh, James Mosley and the late Alan Beverly. They um, they gave me so much information that when I graduated from high school, I was I was pre I was well prepared. Wow. And you had a scholarship to Jackson State. Yep, I went. To, I chose Jackson State. I had several scholarships, and I chose Jackson State. Oh, did you? Did, did TSU try to get you? Yeah, they did. But you know, the the thing is that I wanted to get away from home, and right. and Jackson State really did an awesome job of recruiting me. And I was very impressed with the uh, the school. I was very impressed with the music program and what was uh, being offered at that university. So I was at exactly. Florida Middle School last year. And um, I was saying that to say the students are talking, thinking about um, going to college and I always think, oh, I want to go here, want to go there. And you have to remind them, you need to look at how much money they're going to offer you. 
think about that too and the programs that you want to go into yes you know um it, it has really changed in terms of the process mm-hmm. um uh, and it, it interestingly enough i had to deal with that with my with my son mm-hmm. uh who's a sophomore in college now um the process is is entirely different than it was when i was in school you know i had all these scholarships and and it wasn't really a financial issue because all of them were full scholarships. Okay. Uh, there was a lot of funding for the arts at you know during that time, yeah. uh, which is not there right now. <laughs> so sad, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're taking it out of schools in general, which is really sad, you know. Right, you know. So basically, what I what I tell what I tell the students now is is uh, one. The first thing is you want to find a university that uh, caters to what you want to do the rest of your life and has the best program. And uh, with musicians in particular, I always ask them like, with a, if it was a saxophone player, who's the saxophone teacher? Do you know the saxophone teacher? Is that somebody that you can see yourself studying with for three to four years? Mm-hmm. Is that somebody that, um, you know, that, you know, cause that, that's basically what it is. You're gonna be with this person for four years and as a music major, sometimes five years. Wow. So the mu- you ever saw the movie Drumline? Oh yes. <laughs> so was college like that at all? Was the line like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was definitely uh it was definitely made for TV. Okay. <laughs> uh because one thing which you have to realize is that um when you're dealing with colleges, you're dealing with uh, institutions of higher learning. Mm-hmm. So the um, process of like, and I'm talking about that movie Drumline, what was unrealistic to me mm-hmm. is that how this talented student could get through that process without them knowing it, that he did not know how to read. That's true. Because, yeah. because the audition process, you know, basically encompasses that, you know, they check and see how well you read. It's just like, you know, it's just like you go to college and you're going to be an English major, but you can't read, you don't, mm-hmm. you can't read a book. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same. It's the same thing, yeah, you know, yeah. but but it was it. I, and the reason I said, oh, yes, is because uh, it was a very entertaining movie. I've seen it more than once. <laughs> and and but the, and, and the one true thing about it, though, you do have bands that it's about what happened on Saturday and that they're just teaching band. And then you do have bands where you have directors that teach music mm-hmm. and the ones that teach music. Uh, those students are the most fortunate. That end up doing well. What about the competition? Was it that? Oh, it's definitely competition between the bands. Yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely. What about the band members though, between the, like, you know what I mean? The, um, against each other on the team, that's on the same team. You You know what? um, At at Jackson State, uh, I I got a little bit of that Mm -hmm. when I came in my freshman year, but that was just part of being a freshman. After okay. we got through all of that, everybody embraced everybody. And, 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 and many of those guys and young ladies, well, many of those guys and ladies, we're still friends to this day, you know, okay. because you, 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 um, you spend a lot of time together and you're a part of something that is bigger than you. Yeah. Brothers, sisters? Yes, I have, a, I have a brother and I have a sister. Do either of them play? Uh, my brother is a, is a fantastic drummer. Okay. Yeah, his name's Kenny Turner. He 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 plays um plays around the city. He, uh, he has uh actually has some music on um on um uh, that is you know streaming now under the name Fix F I X X. Um, very talented, extremely talented. And you said your dad played. Was he actually my dad? Played? My dad was a drummer and a vocalist. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's retired now. Have y'all ever played together? Um, been on the stage together? Yeah. Yes, actually, he, uh, my last CD, uh, which was the Kyle Turner Live CD uh, in 2019, I was uh, that was released in 2019. I was blessed to have him be a part of that CD. Oh, I bet that was awesome. But that was awesome. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Definitely. And Keith, Very... I know you said you have a son. Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, I have eight kids. I have four biological kids and four uh-huh. bonus kids. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, yeah, big family, a uh, very close knit family as well, and and three of the kids play music. Okay. Anybody the three play of them. Uh, no, what the only two woodwind? That's an interesting story. The only two woodwind people in the, in the family is my oldest, the oldest, 
uh-huh. my niece. She's uh, actually a band director in, in the uh, Jackson, Mississippi area. Okay. And uh, she, she plays flute. And then uh, everybody else in my family, I mean, everybody else that plays instruments in my family plays drums. My dad was a drummer. My brother's a drummer. Both my sons are drummers. I tell parents all the time that you got to let kids choose their path. You know, you know, uh, you can't force them to do something that uh, you want them to do, you know, and or, or try to live vicariously through your child yeah. for something that you wish you would have done. Exactly. Uh-huh. So uh, as long as they're doing something positive, Mm-hmm. And, and and have ambition yeah. let them pursue those goals and try as many different things you know exactly. until they find until they find their passion it matches them um i still wish my mama would have let would not have let me quit piano though i probably could be <laughs> would let you quit I, I i can i tell you we have that in common because i i stopped playing piano at a young age oh, and i wish it? i wish they didn't let me quit either because now i'm an older musician i wish i played piano what better play? <laughs> do you, what other instruments do you play uh saxophone and blue i can play piano just a little bit just enough to do some writing and and, okay. and to decipher some things out that i want to do creatively so when you're making music you use the piano to try to hear the melodies and things that you're trying to yeah, when I'm writing, I, I typically write from the piano. What made you choose the sax? I always like to hear these stories. Okay, so you want uh, the cliff note version is this, is that <laughs> like any any young uh, uh, kid that admires his father, you want to do what your father did. So mm-hmm. I wanted to do drums. He told me no. <laughs> he told me no. Uh, then I had a friend of mine that lived down the street. He was a couple of years older than me. He played trumpet. And my dad realized the only reason I wanted to play trumpet was because he did. And he told me no. Okay. And then uh, the same thing with a cousin that played trombone, Smokey Phillips. He, he was a really great trombone player. And he was winning all these contests and stuff. So I wanted to play trombone because I was looking up to people. But my dad got me. Uh, what he did was, and, and, and he brainwashed me into the saxophone, really, because he just started playing a whole bunch of saxophone records. And... Um, and the, the record that sticks out the most to me is a Sonny Stitt record called Now. Mm-hmm. And I just thought Sonny Stitt looked so cool on that album cover. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I've been hearing all this, this great music, saxophone music around the house that I fell in love with the instrument before I, you know, with saxophone before I even uh, started playing. Oh, wow. Okay. And you started in middle school? I started in middle school in the sixth grade. Okay. Okay. Um, so I thought you were going to say something like the girls. You started middle school, so you probably wouldn't even think about girls yet. That's that a cool happened, age that you have to say. That happened. That happened around the seventh grade. I got. <laughs> I kind of got. It, I kind of got interested in 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 in, in uh, the girls around my seventh grade. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, 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 I was I was managed, as they would say, huh? He was a managed boy around there. <laughs> you had a full scholarship at Jackson State. Yes, I had okay. full scholarship to Texas Southern. Mississippi Valley. I'm trying to spend so long ago. It, it was several. Yeah. Um, Delaware State, that? Delaware State, Morgan State. Oh, um, you could have had your pick then. Yeah. What What happened? I was what I was fortunate uh, to have happen my uh, senior year in high school is the congressman from that area, um, uh, Jack Fields, I believe his name was. Um, he uh, hooked up a situation that we could play on the steps of uh, the Capitol in D.C. So what our band directors did is turn that that bus ride to D.C. until a college, you know, a whole trip where we stopped at different colleges and we had the opportunity to see those schools and audition at those schools. Oh, that's cool. OK, that was a great yeah, idea. All, all HBCU. I chose to be a full time musician, but it, it happened actually before college. because I, I got a taste of it uh, after my senior year in high school. Okay. Um, before I went to college, I was playing with a, a, a gentleman, um, um, incredible band director and trumpet player. He's just recently um, uh, transitioned mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, a guy named Calvin Hudson. And um, he hired me to play it, you know, with him during the summer, during his summer break. He was a, he was at Mississippi Valley, a senior there, uh-huh. but he's from Houston and he had some gigs around the Houston area and he hired me. So we, I played the whole summer before I went to school with him and and made made little change, you know, before I went to school. Take the school with you. Right. And then um my junior year, 
in college, I got the opportunity to go on a road with Johnny Taylor. So that's where it really started becoming real, you know. And by that time, I had a family too. So okay. you played with Johnny Taylor, Kirk Whalum. You did a CD with Luther. Are you on his CD? Uh, no, I did. I did the last half. Of, of the Any Love Tour. And it's funny that you say Kirk Whalum then, and then Luther because uh -huh. Kirk, Kirk was actually the one that referred me to replace okay. him on that tour. Cause he was doing, he was doing the uh, Luther Vandross tour and he actually recorded on the record. Uh -huh. uh, however, he was signed to Columbia Records at that time. And he had a record that came out during the tour. So he had to go promote that record. And uh -huh. he recommended me, I did the audition and, and was able to get, and was fortunate enough to be able to, uh, to you know, do the last half that any love to. Oh, that's cool. And then Joe Samples, but, oh, and Bobby Lyle. I wanted to ask you about Johnny Taylor. Like, what was he like? He seemed like he was a good time. Yeah, he was, he was a beautiful person. He, of course, he's a legend. Yeah. And, and surprisingly, one thing that he and I, and you know, and I was very young when I played with him, mm -hmm. but one thing that we had in common is that we both loved Charlie Parker, you know, and he would hear me playing, you know, practicing or whatever, and, and I'm playing all this Charlie Parker stuff, and he was like, you know, he he was really appreciative of that and supportive of that and supportive mm -hmm. of, of the direction I was going as a saxophone player. Uh -huh. Learned a lot from him, too. Really? Yeah, learned yeah. a lot about you know, about blues, really, you know, we, you know, you on the stage every night with a legend like that. Okay. And then you, and then before you play and you hearing like little Milton, are you hearing Albert Collins, you know, uh, you, you're hearing all these great blues, you, you know, musicians, mm -hmm. you know, um, you can't help but grow, especially, you know, right, from right. That environment. Says, I'm going to hear jazz. I'm going out to hear jazz night. So when you go to hear jazz, my mama will be like, I don't like jazz. I don't want to hear jazz. So, so mama, is, jazz is not like it used to be. Jazz, you might hear a little R&B, a little this, a little that. So what do you what do you think? Because everything has to evolve. I definitely believe that even in our dance, we evolve, add things. What do you think about that uh, jazz opening up to playing more different types of music? Okay. Um, and, and, and it's funny that you asked that question because that's one reason why I do the radio show over at KTSU. Is that mm -hmm. because I do believe, okay, first of all, I do believe that jazz is America's classical music. It was originated here, uh, started by us, mm -hmm. you know, and it's America's classical music. So just like any classical music, the whole, the whole, um, the whole history of it has to be respected and, and presented. You know, yeah. if there, if there was, if there was no, John Coltrane or no Charlie Parker, there would be no Kirk Whalum. You see what I'm saying? If there was no Louis Armstrong, there would be no Rick Braun. You know what I'm saying? You know, or, or whoever, whatever trumpet players that you, you might admire that are, that are doing what is quote unquote smooth jazz or contemporary jazz. You know, so you, to me, as a jazz musician, uh, I feel that I have the responsibility to explore all the areas of jazz. And one thing that I am doing is that uh, I uh, was, you know, started a jazz jam session where we deal with uh, the period, you know, basically, you know, that, that type of music. You know, we, we go back and revisit music. And then you have artists now that are still playing in that tradition and it has evolved, mm -hmm. but they're still playing that tradition and they deserve to be heard as well. So, yeah. you know, in terms of modern uh, saxophone players, uh, to me, one of my favorite players is, is Kenny Garrett, mm -hmm. you know. And Bramford Marcellus, you know, those guys are really, and Joshua Redman, all those guys are really playing the horn. Mm -hmm. And they're playing within the, the, what is called the tradition of the music or what you might, when you cut on serious radio, they would call real jazz. But then there are other artists that can play as well, like your Gerald Albright, your Kirk Whalums, mm -hmm. you know, and your David Sanborns, Everett Harp, you know, all those guys that are playing what I thought you know you would call contemporary or smooth jazz mm -hmm. so it's a it's a gumbo of all of it but uh in in terms of um i've heard that a billion times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you know i don't like jazz i don't like this well i never knew i would like jazz you know what right. i'm saying right. and then you know i'm i'm pretty much known as being a contemporary jazz artist mm -hmm. and i'll sneak some john coltrane in and people i was just about to ask that do you still make sure that you get that traditional right Right. I would sneak that in and then people were like, wow, that was nice. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, so it's just about it's about allowing your ears to open up. Open up. And and and, and uh, jazz is an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just like blues to me. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I know jazz and blues kind of go together to a certain extent, but there's some blues I can hear here and I'm like, okay, I can listen to that. But if I go to a, uh, like a whole show, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I can, I can. Now, not all of them, I'll tell you, I'm not, not all of it. So a little, some of it's too much for me, but I can mm-hmm. hearing it more and more. It's like, oh, okay, that's right. That's, you know, um, I guess acquiring the taste, like what you said. Well, that's that's one thing that you you said something that was very key that once you are put in that environment, mm-hmm. you know, and and you you listening at an artist, you know, it might they might not even be the headline. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, they are opening up for somebody you like. And then you like, wow, I never thought I would like that. I would like. It. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You know, it's just about being wide open. And as musicians, I, I really do feel. My dad, my dad taught me something very at a very young age. My dad, he would he would tell me there's no such thing as bad music. There's music played badly. That means that, you know, you might have some musicians that's not playing the music great, but yeah. it's no such thing as bad music. Bad music. I have to put that on my I'm making these new shirts. Uh, it's gonna be my new business. I'm making some shirts about music and live music. Might have to steal that from your daddy. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> to steal that from him. But yeah. even Zodico, you hear people. I, I like like all music. I love Zodico. I, Never, uh, I would hear people say, I'm not going to hear that. It all sounds the same. But if you go and listen, it does not all sound the same. You know, oh, yeah, these, these little, different artists, yeah, they have their own style. They have their own style. And um, so I was going to say something else. I lost my train of thought. But yeah, uh, it has its own, own, oh, flute. Never, ever, ever, ever would have told you I'm going to hear somebody play the flute. Like I would tell you, I'm not going to hear somebody <laughs> play the flute. Then when I had Althea at um, Divas, mm-hmm. I was like, wow. Oh my yes. gosh, like it blew me away. And she's absolutely awesome. Awesome. What, and I was like, who would think that comes out of a flute, when, especially when you've always heard just the flute at school? And right. let me make you a funny story about Smiley Forsbrook and I went to Aldine. Okay. So, you know, y'all have the jamming bands, y'all out there jamming. <laughs> Getting it right. Well, here come our band playing regulars. We would be so embarrassed. We're like, we playing Smiley or we playing Fargo Brook this weekend. Half guys going to suck. They're going to kill us. <laughs> uh, well, you know what, though? Uh, and, and, and it goes back to uh, an appreciation for everything. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing is, is that with those marches, what I like, one thing that did happen to Smiley, mm-hmm. we played all the, the top stuff that was on the radio, mm-hmm. but our band directors also made us learn marches because you are a marching band. So yeah. he made us learn traditional marches like trombone king and all this mm-hmm. stuff that, that you might hear at your school at all But mm-hmm. you know, we, it, the whole thing was about being well-rounded. Yeah. And, and yeah. those pieces were very challenging, you know, you know, in terms of having to learn how to play, they, would be, they required some work. So you have reason to be proud of y'all. You have reason to be, you have reason to be proud of your all Dean band because they, they worked hard. Well, as I got older, of course, I appreciated. Oh wow, they were doing this at a you know they were young. You know now that I when I got into live, he's like, damn, we were doing some things back then. But when we were young. It was like, uh, uh-uh, they're gonna be playing this. They're gonna be playing that. We gonna look exactly. Crazy. They're gonna be jamming. They're gonna be playing. <laughs> like because it. it's funny though. It's funny though because um, uh, uh, my wife and I. We we go back. She went to North Shore and played in the band in North Shore. So it was the same type of thing, yeah, you know. And, yeah. and she would say we would hate when we had to play Smiley, you know. Because yes. we knew y'all was gonna come out, Jim. Just like now. Well, I haven't been to like the what is the battle of the bands with TSU and um Perview in a long time, but that was always a highlight. Was that the Labor Day classic? I think the Labor Day classic, yes. Yeah, yeah. I and been both of those programs, years. both of those programs are, are doing well right now. They have really? you know, they have yeah, both of those programs are doing well. So it's very entertaining. How did you start being on the radio? And how long have you been doing that? Okay, uh, this will be my fourth year. Um, okay. The way it happened is, 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 it's kind of funny the way it happened. There was a guy that was on a KTSU that uh, was sick, was out with the flu. And uh, he asked me, he said, hey, man, you know the music. You know, he was doing a jazz show. He said, you really know the music. So... Um, we can arrange for you to come in and we'll send an engineer in with you because I didn't know how to run that of the equipment right. at the studio. And on, so the only thing I was doing was picking the music I wanted to play and the engineer would play it. And then, oh. then 
uh, people said that I had a nice voice, a nice radio voice. Okay. So fast forward three months later, there was an opportunity. Um, well, the the, uh, the DJ that was there mm -hmm. uh, left the station. Okay. And they and and the uh, response from when I was on in December was so huge that that's how they, they said, hey, you know, you know, Ernest Walker and Donna Franklin called me in and said, hey, you know, your response was really great. And would you consider, you know, doing these, you know, you know, coming in and filling this time slot for us? And it's been it's been really um, it's been really enjoyable. And it's been really helpful to me as a musician because of the fact that. You know, I'm, I, I hear the stuff when it comes out, right. you know, and, and and a big part of being a musician is listening, yeah, listening to music. Yeah. And then, Abel, you're kind of educating, too, as you're playing the music. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. because the way my show is, the jazz club, it goes back to what we were talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm playing contemporary jazz and then I'm playing the quote unquote classic jazz. So, mm -hmm. And so there are people that that might like um, like an Althea Renee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then they'll go back and they'll hear Hubert Laws or they might hear a, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, James Moody, mm -hmm. who is all, you know, they're great, you know, flawless, you know, right. and, and, but they hear in a different style. And it opens, it just opens up your mind. Michael Ward. Yeah, Michael Ward, that's my yeah. buddy. That's my partner in crime. Yeah. We just, yeah. actually, we just played together two weeks ago. Oh, really? How's and, he doing? Oh, he's doing great. He's yeah. doing great. He's sounding good. And he's kind of, what's so funny is that he's kind of like the grandfathered in in terms of contemporary violin because he comes out of a tradition of John Blake and and uh, Noel Pointer and all those guys that, you know, were doing the contemporary jazz thing on the violin. And since then, you have great violinists like, you know, like other great violinists like Karen Briggs uh, yeah. and, and um, you know, one right here in Houston that I really I mean, enjoy is Dominique Hammond. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, you know, he, you know, before before all these guys, Dominique Hammond, Damian Escobar, I don't want to leave nobody See, out. I though. didn't know, um, to be honest with you, until let's talking to you now, I didn't realize, which is another reason I do this show, I didn't realize before oh, Michael Ward. I don't, I didn't know that there were Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But, you know, uh, if Michael. you listen, if you go back and listen to uh, some old Grover Washington Jr. records, mm -hmm. he used the violin a lot on a lot of his really? records. Yes. Okay. And I may have thought it was another instrument. Maybe. Yep. That's because you didn't <laughs> want to play violin. <laughs> you didn't want to practice. You know, when the Zodico people don't have a, oh, if they, don't, I may have it backwards. If they don't have a bass player, they can play it on the piano, the keyboard, or vice versa, one or two. And I was like, really? And you can do so many things with music, and it just throws me off. I'm like, wow. Oh yeah, it's limit. It, you know, there's no limits. Yeah. Whatever your whatever your creativity, you know, whatever you can think of and can see, uh, um, it it you can put you know put it in your music, you know. And music saves people's lives because um, when I, I used to have a website, still have it, I just don't update it. But why used to tell people to go, what to do, where to go hear live music, blah blah blah. But these people reached out to me from the fibromyalgia or uh, um, organization, and they wanted to be on my website and they wanted me to send them uh, where music would be or different people that did music because it helped their patients some kind of way never went deeper than that but I just thought that was always interesting that they wanted well to music therapy music therapy yeah. has really gotten big yeah it has really yeah. gotten big it's it's um and, and I I, I kind of knew it, it got big in the 90s like the 80s and 90s the uh, music therapy thing and they have a degree in for music yeah. therapy wow. music therapy degrees but I remember um a friend of mine, uh, mm -hmm. when I was living in Austin, he had an aneurysm mm -hmm. and um, pretty much lost a lot of his memory. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I went and saw him like about a week later, you know, after he was able, you know, he was walking around and um, he didn't really remember, you know, my name. He knew who I was, but he couldn't remember my name. But what one of the things that helped him was that I just started playing music that um that uh, he would listen to. You know, he was a big John Coltrane fan. And eventually, you know, he, he loved John Coltrane. He loved Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Yeah. And uh, I would play that music. And eventually, it would, it would you know, it, it, it struck something in him where, it, you know, he was able to, you know, and then other things started. You know, he started remembering other things, you know. 
because music is full of, and I've read, a, it sounds like the quote I read, but it, it's so full of memories. And you know what I mean? It's oh, so yeah. full of that, how you remember, you remember where you were oftentimes when you hear a song. And I yeah, was you're absolutely really right. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back a little bit and ask you, do you remember your first performance, live performance? In terms of when, um, as a sorry. professionally, mm -hmm. yes, it was at it was with Calvin Hudson. At the, oh, okay. Actually, you know what? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, my first time I played like publicly, I was probably sixteen years old, and, and my dad realized I was going to be a musician, mm -hmm. so I went to one of his gigs. And ironically enough, this particular gig I went uh, uh, to, it was a place called Michael J's in Pasadena. And it was a country western gig. And he said, I know you like, he said, I know you like this jazz stuff, but if you're gonna be a musician, you need to be well rounded, you know, and that's where the no such thing as bad music, right. you know, is and um uh, and the guys were real patient, uh -huh. you know, and they were real country players. <laughs> they were real patient with me, and and the um the lead singer was and he played guitar, it was a guy named uh Lonnie Lamarck. Mm -hmm. And he would, you know, the first, you know, we played the first set and he was sat down and he said, this is, uh, as a saxophone player, this is what I like to hear and what your role should be. Oh. And he he sat down and, was written and taught me, you know. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, so that was my first, that was my first time playing in front of people in, in a, I guess, a club that was situation. a good preparation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you still get nervous before you play? Yeah. You do? Okay. It typically goes away after the first note, though. Like, after the first few notes, you know, um, the most nervous I've been ever was when I just came back, you know, two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, because uh, you don't, you know, you, I, I had a long period off, and, um, you know, and I was just nervous about if I was going to do well and, you know, how I was going to sound and, right. you know. Yeah. So when you got finished, how did you feel? Like, did you know that you were successful? Did you? Well, after the first song, <laughs> <laughs> after the first song, and I and and the response of the crowd clapping and yeah. and everybody relieved that I could still play, you know, because every yeah. you know it was a lot of anxiety. <laughs> you know, take you know take your time coming back and you know and make sure you don't overdo it mm -hmm. after they after the first song. It it was great, and you know, and it and then you know. I had my friends on stage with me too because they, you know, Marion Meadows and and uh, oh, that's right, Marion was here, yeah. Yeah, Marion, Joy Somerville, and Michael Ward were there, so they gave me support, yeah. and 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 so it made at that point it was just like, okay, we're gonna play music, have some fun, yeah, and do what we do. Yeah, yeah. He's the one. Uh, when I chatted with Marion, he's the one that told me uh, that when everybody came back uh, to play again, I was like this big family reunion everybody was so happy to see each other <laughs> oh yeah yeah we were <laughs> you guys are very approachable and I like that about both of you I've never felt uncomfortable coming up to say hi or anything like that you know um so I want to say thank you for being approachable to your fans and people that admire you so I like well that. I well that. we don't take it for granted at least at least and I'm gonna speak for myself and I know I'm, I'm I know Marion feels the same way but we don't we don't take it for granted that you know uh, people have options of what they like and what they don't like so if people enjoy what I'm doing then you know I think it, you know I, I don't take it for granted and I'm very appreciative and, and grateful you know that 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 people want to listen to you know this this fellow from the north side of Houston. Yeah. Can you? No, sing? no. My brother and my dad. My dad first. My dad is, he can sing, uh, sing. was an incredible, amazing yeah. vocalist, and my brother sings well. As but uh, no, you don't want to hear me sing. You know, you don't want to hear me sing. Okay, we you know, make sure of that. You know, but the thing is this though: I have on occasion, you know, you know, having fun and playing uh -huh. with folks. You know, I've got I've been in, at gigs and. And we're partying and everything, and I I sing a little bit, you know, just to, and you nobody know. notices you can't sing because y'all have such a good time. Yep, you are, some people actually some people actually enjoyed it, you know, okay. and it's just you know just you know bringing people together and bring, making them a part of what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, just you know, and, right. What do you do to chill and relax and get away from it all? Everybody that knows me knows I'm a huge sports fan. Oh really? I'm that I'm that dude that can watch 
NFL Network, ESPN. Have I, I have I probably have three things, uh, three shows, sports shows taped from today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're really a sports fan. Oh yeah. Texas I'm, or Cowboys. Texans all day long. I'm Houston. I'm Houston all day long. Yeah, yeah. Now, now football wise, I do have a, a AFC team mm-hmm. and an NFC team. Oh, okay. Now, okay, so my AFC team is 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 the Texans. Okay. My NFC team is New is the Saints, New Saints. Orleans Saints. Okay, okay. And and people say, how did that happen? I uh, with Michael uh, Ward and myself being such close friends, I spent a lot of time in New Orleans, and and I just became a Saints fan. Yeah, you can't be around New Orleans people that long and don't become a fan. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, they're persistent. Oh, you know what's funny though, mm-hmm. Michael, Michael, uh, even after the Super Bowl. He's just recently became a Saints fan because he, you know, all those years he was in New Orleans, he was a Cowboys fan. Now that's interesting. Yeah, but you know, he's from San, he's from San Antonio, so it makes sense. Oh, okay. Okay. He's originally from San Antonio. He moved to uh, Louisiana he, uh, to go to college oh, okay. and, and never moved back home. Wednesday, we do the jazz jam session. And that was something that um I talked to the owner uh, Susan Davis about is that um I want uh I'm known as a contemporary jazz artist, mm-hmm. but I want to expand my creativity. I want to, you know, I want to do something different that will force me to operate differently creatively. Okay. So that's how the Wednesday nights came about. And, you know, I, I did a couple of uh, quote unquote traditional jazz gigs with a few people. And, and, and I've always incorporated it, rated it in my shows, mm-hmm. but a, a lot of people seem surprised that, I was able to go that direction, mm. you know, and, you typically and playing the contemporary stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I enjoy all of it. Yeah. You know, so I wanted a, you know, an outlet where it forced me to, to learn different songs. Yeah. It forced me to approach the saxophone differently mm-hmm. and, uh, and play um, because any type of music you play, you have to play within the um, parameters of that genre. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, I can't, I can't come in sounding like Charlie Parker if I was playing with Garth Brooks. Mm-hmm. I have to play, you know, with <laughs> right. in the parameter of the music. Yeah. You know, and vice versa. I, I play, you know, I can play, you know, there's certain things that that are the different styles and genre, you know, genres require of you as a musician. Right. Um, so who else plays in the jam session? Is it different people that come out or? Whoever? Yeah, well, basically the core, the core rhythm section is um, Vernon Daniels, uh, A.J. Moeller, and Daryl Levine. Okay, okay. They're the core rhythm section. And, um, and we're, we're having a lot of fun with it, you know, because, uh, and, and it's, uh, and, and it's just another, it's just another area that is forcing me to, to practice different. It's forcing me to learn something Challenge. different. Yes, yeah, so it's challenging, mm-hmm. right? And uh, as as musicians, we always looking for something challenging right. that because the challenge makes you a better musician. Right. Um, I have to get out there when it starts at eight every Wednesday, and it's only a ten dollars. Well, well, yep, yeah, exactly at eight o'clock. Well, we actually going to change the time to eight thirty. Okay. Okay. Because some, you know, a lot of it's funny. It's funny how some music listeners. Mm-hmm. It. it you know, the, the ones that's going to spend two or three hours there act like they can't come out if it's still light outside. <laughs> <laughs> we be ready to go home. I'll be ready to go home and they still ready to come out. They just Yeah, out. exactly. <laughs> where, they're like, well, where are you going? And I'm thinking, I'm going out. Well, it's only seven, but I'm trying to be home by a certain time. Exactly. <laughs> especially rage, especially the during the middle of the week. But yeah. as musicians... Musicians, that's right up by alley. To come on out, like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, we, you know, to play later, you know. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, and so October fifteenth is Althea's Renee show in San Antonio. Right. And you got, you're going to be on that show. That's going to be cool. Also, also at uh the three uh, at three six six Sky Lounge. Uh huh. I'm getting ready to do a residency there, and I'll be playing there the second and fourth uh, Thursdays of every month. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's a beautiful room, too. I heard I haven't been there yet. Well, I've been to the building because Andre Seville has a, uh, he did my photo shoot there, but I haven't been to right. the club yet. So I want to get there. So that'll be a good opportunity for me to hear you because that's close to my house. 
Okay, good deal. <laughs> so it's close it to does. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful room, and uh, we're. I, I, I think we're we we'll uh, be playing from eight until eleven. Okay. Oh yeah, that'll be good for the good Thursday. I can leave at ten. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you so, hear a lot of music. You hear, but you know what? We we're gonna we're gonna try to play so good that we keep you there till eleven. Because you know how that go too. You get to hear that look good music, and you get your little wine. You good, nice and relaxed. <laughs> Do you think you guys will ever put a, together another show, or they'll put another show together like you guys did on the fifth? Well, they are uh, they they're new on the block. Okay. And they are wide open to that. Uh, the show on the fifth was uh, the first one mm -hmm. that they done on that level because it was it was sold out. Really? Uh, it I didn't was, even ask yeah. anybody how it went. Yep, and it didn't, and it was actually not in the uh, the lounge area. It was mm -hmm. in uh, the event area, which held about it was probably about two hundred and fifty people. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, oh. so it was it was sold out, and and they are they are using that events they're going to use that event space to do shows you know and um and um it's, it's a wonderful place to go hear music and and the ambiance there is, is is really really great well i want to thank you again for joining me and being open to it. and then we both of us had to have some flexibility so i appreciate it. oh yeah and, and like a, <laughs> it worked yeah, out but, but we we made it happen we made it happen so thank you kyle so much i can't wait to see you play again or hear well, you play again well, I can't wait. I can't wait for you to come and see us. Yes. Thank you so much. And we will see you soon. Mm -hmm. I can't sing either. <laughs> I can't sing. I can't Everybody care. Everybody that wants to find out what I'm doing, uh, the website is www.kyleturnersaxophone.com. Kyle Turner Saxophone, yes. KyleTurnerSaxophone.com. All righty. Well, thank you again. Thank you. You have a blessed evening. You too. Bye. Thank you again, Mr. Kyle Turner, for joining me today. I am so honored to have you on Chat with Trina. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. And I wish you the best. And I can't wait to get out and see you play. Y'all, make sure y'all go to YouTube.com slash Chat with Trina. Please subscribe and then hit the little bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. And hey, if there's someone that you'd like to see on Chat with Trina, let me know. Comment, like, and don't forget to share.